Hello. Uh, today we will talk about several data structures that enable efficient answers to range queries. Uh, and as a separate material, I will give some algorithms with square root complexity. Uh, and one of those algorithms will be about range queries again, so it is kind of related. Uh, but still the main theme will be range queries. Uh, and it is all about computing a value based on a subarray of an array. Okay, so uh, for instance, I may want to sum up the values in a given subarray, or I may want to find the minimum of the entries in the sub part of this array, or max, etc. Uh, yeah, so typical queries are about finding sums or extreme points. Uh, and obviously, so you may say, what, what are you talking about? It's a very d easy problem. Yes, it is indeed, but uh, it will take linear time to traverse that subarray. You need to begin from index A and go until index B if your range is from A to B, and you add the values up, or you can keep the minimum in this interval. But this will take uh, a linear time uh, because A and B can be very far away from each other. In the worst case, it will be from 0 to n. So uh, this algorithm has the worst case complexity of O n if your array full size is n. Uh, yeah. So we will make this fast, basically. It is the idea today. So let's begin with uh, the assumption that the given array is static, which means the values will never be updated. So you can this hints us that I can build a data structure uh, <clears throat> that doesn't support update operation, but that does support the others um, very efficiently, assuming that there won't be any updates. So uh, here, the first thing is about prefix sum. This is the data structure. In the heart, it is an array, literally an array. But the entries of this will be very smart, uh, such that uh, so the i-th entry will keep the sum of original array entries from 0 to i, okay? Uh, so, or the entry at index i, let me be more precise, in the prefix sum array, the entry at index i is the sum of entries in the original array from 0 to index i. So here 8 means 1 plus 3 plus 4, or this guy will be having the sum <coughs> of entries uh, so for this index it will have this sum if you make the sum it will end up with 23 so first things first how can I construct this prefix summary it is very simple uh, uh, basically like this right you the first entry will be the array first entry a0 and then as I go to the last entry, I will add the current value to the existing value in the left most uh, in the left entry of the current entry. So let's be exact to compute uh, P3, I will have the accumulated value on P2. This is where the dynamic programming kicks in actually. So I don't recompute this. I just read this value from an array, which happens to be the same array in this case, P2 plus A3. So this 8 plus this 8. So it is a bad coincidence that we have the same number. So 8 is 16. For this guy, it will be P6 is P5 plus A4, which is 23 plus 4, 27. Yeah. So, uh, then, so why do I compute this? Basically, there is a geometric interpretation of this structure to get the sum in this subarray. What I need to do is I will get the sum from the beginning to here, okay, and I will reduce this sum from that. So, sorry, this sum because I forgot the uh, I want to sum up the values in this interval of size of length 4 so what I do is I make a shot from the beginning till the end of this range but I overshoot so I the excessive amounts I get rid of them by subtracting the stuff from again 0 to index a minus 1 be careful not a because a is in my life 
So this is the overall formula. Given some a, uh, query some a b, I will get all the way down to zero b, which happens to be twenty seven in this case, uh, and then I get rid of the excessive amounts, which happens to be eight in this case. So it is an O one operation, right? Just look up, uh, look up this entry, this entry. In the beginning, of course, it took O n time, but it is pre-processing. It doesn't count. The query time is O n, O one, literally. And I can generalize this idea to many higher dimensions. So, same geometric argument. If I want to sum within this subarray, and if I have a function like prefix sum array, okay, I call it prefix sum array or in this case prefix sum rectangle, whatever, in this case, sx, it gives me the sum from this index, this rectangle that runs from, so if x is the sum of values in a rectangular subarray from the upper left counter from the position x. So if x is, I don't know, this, if this is your x, then sx gives you this sum, okay? This is by definition. So with that in mind, what I do is I have S A, it gives me this area, and I overshoot unfortunately. So I get rid of S B. So this is gone. Okay, I still have some excess amount, so I get rid of S C. But now be careful. I got rid of this part, S D part, twice. One due to S B, one due to S C. So I owe me another S D, so I add plus S D. Okay, that's the idea. Let's proceed. Uh, I want to handle minimum or maximum queries. Uh, so then I will use a different data structure called sparse table. Okay, again, I will have some pre processing time, but then the queries will be O1, just like the sum queries. So uh, again, prefix sum array is about sum, as the name implies. I can't do mean with this. And with sparse table, I want to addition. This is a reserved for min max stuff. So the idea is this pre compute all values of minimum uh, AB, where this range, be careful, B minus A plus 1 is this range, right? I go from A to 3, if uh, A to B, if A is 2 and B is 5, then what is the length of this range? 2, 3, 4, 5, 4. How do I get it? 5 minus 2 plus 1. So it has the so this is the length. So pre-compute all values of minimum uh, of minimum a b where the length is a power of two. Okay, this is the tricky part. <clears throat> so let's do it as we go, you will understand. So first ranges of size 2 to the 0, which is 1. That would be one element range right so for this range winner is one for this range winner is three for this range winner is four so just the entry itself not a big deal then i will do two to the one so ranges of size two which is this range is from zero to one one and three winner is one then the range one two the winner is three okay so i don't know range five six the winner would be one so i i keep these values then still i have size in in this case i have size eight so i will go up to size two to the two, three so what is two to the two four uh, i will take the winner of this sub region from zero to three is one one to four is three okay and then I will also keep the winner of 2 to the 3, which is the minimum of whole array, uh, and it is 1. Uh, so you can, I will show you how to compute these values literally in a second, but this is, assume that we have this information. Uh, so how many pre-computed values do we have? <clears throat> uh, I tell you that we have n log n values. Why? Because there will be log n intervals or log n range lengths that are powers of 2. So let's digest this. Uh, so range lengths that are powers of 2. So these are range lengths like 1, 2, 
four, eight. So if my whole n is like uh, thirty-six, for instance, okay, uh, then uh, I will be uh, doubling these numbers until 32 so but what does it mean mathematically it means the following so uh, I will double since my range is up to 36 so let us go with 32 without more confusion uh, to reach 32 from 1 I need to do 5 clumps this is the definition of logarithm uh, because log 2 base 32 is 5 how many times do I need to divide 32 by 2 until I hit 1 it is the definition of logarithm so this definition from reverse is I need to double these numbers log n times to reach the number n okay that's why I will have log n range lengths and within each range length there will be at most n values so when the range length is 1 the most stupid range it was, uh, but I need it I will literally have uh, n, n values right because every entry is one range then for range 2 I basically I have a value for this range and this range and this range uh, so if you accumulate it like this you will have n minus 1 values never more than n so in the worst case it will be no n and I have log n ranges each of which is on so n no it's why, why this many entries I have now now that I understand the sparse table uh, how do I answer the query in all one time basically I just apply this recursion so what does this tell you uh, uh, remember the uh, <clears throat> b is a power of 2 and so uh, to answer the query of minimum from a to b I look at I go to the midpoint w so w is the midpoint of this query so let's go for over this example 3 to 6 the midpoint of that will be uh, 6 plus 3 9 9 over 2 4 4 integer division 4 so what I do is I look at the first range from uh, a to from a to from uh, a to that w, and I will also look at the range from w to the b. Okay, so I have this a b range. Okay, I will first look at a to w minus one, and I will also look at uh, a plus w to b so I literally divide this range into two disjoint uh, ranges uh, but the good news is uh, <clears throat> uh, yeah so mm, let me be uh, uh, so uh, so uh, I am filling the entries by the way so uh, it is not about query so uh, okay I, I am in the previous slide so let me begin from scratch in the previous slide I proved you that there will be n login entries now let's fill these entries okay so this is the pre-computation part then I will show you the query so no query no. so since I am filling it I will fill all these a B intervals and I know that this is a guarantee a B the length of this range is a power of 2 okay so like 4 8 so let's go with 4 this is the example of 4 so I can always divide this power of 2 from right in the middle like if it is 8 it will be 4 by 4 so in this case it's 4 so it will be 2 by 2 so I will look at the winner of 2 2 because it is a smaller case it has already been solved and I will also look at the minimum of the other two and then I will select the minimum of these two values so in this case to fill this entry 3 6 which is a length of 4 range of length 4 so it will be using smaller ranges like 2 in this case uh, 
uh, I will first look at 3 to 4 halfway which is 6 okay this value and the other is 5 to 6 which is 1 so I already know these values they have already been pre-computed okay as I feel it this is like uh, 3 6 is going to happen in the variant towards the variant so 6 versus 1 1 is the winner so this one is written here that is the idea in the beginning trivially all the one ranges are the entries themselves so it is how I initializing these thing, things then I do range of 2 and then I do range of 4 as I did here and in the end when I want to do range of 8 in this case there will be only one range which will be from 0 to 7 and it is this entry I will look at the range from 0 to 3 so look at that answer uh, where is it it is here 1 and the other is from 4 to 7 I look at the pre-computed result which is 1 1 and 1 minimum is 1 answer is 1 yeah yeah so this is that is the pre-computation pre actually and it takes n log n time and yeah, because there will be n log n entries for which I do this now the query finally yeah. the query is totally arbitrary okay uh, okay uh, so in this case the range length is not necessarily a power of two okay it's a total arbitrary query but in my sparse table i always have the power of two ranges okay so to answer query from a to b i will first of all i have this i will compute this number k which is the largest power of two that does not exceed my range length okay so if my range length is six then k would be 4, right? Because 4 doesn't exceed 6. I can't uh, use 8 here. 4. So k is 4. So it tells me this. Since my range from 1 to 6, basically this is my range from 1 to 6, I will first look at uh, from 1 to 3. And it comes from here, right? From 1. 1 is the input. And then k is 4. The... Uh, largest power of 2 that doesn't exceed so it is 4 so a plus k minus 1 is 3 1 plus 3 is 4 so I will so this will look at this value from 1 to 4 uh, index 4 and the other will be looking at uh, the interval that ends with b so this is the end point and it begins not from 4 but 1 next to 4 which is 5 so if you plug that in basically from 6 I subtract uh, uh, my, I subtract minus 3 uh, so it will be uh, 3 to 6 uh, so both intervals are ready so it is already written here the example so for this scenario let me go through this again on the example that has already been illustrated here so I want to find the sum from 1 to 6 okay so what is the largest power of 2 that doesn't exist 6 it is 4 so 1 will so it means that I will use intervals of size 4 but they will not be disjoint if they will then 4 plus 4 8 at 8 will exceed my range right so they may overlap there is no problem with that so first range is of size 4 this and the second is of size 4 this so beginning is 1 1 is because of my input remember input is from 1 to 6 and midpoint is I will go so long I will go in such a way that the size the length will be 4 so it happens to be this formula it, the details doesn't really matter so it goes to 4 in this case and the, I know the winner of this interval because I know the winner of all power of 2 intervals in the sparse table. So I will just go look at it uh, and I will see that it will be 3 because uh, I have 4 alternatives, 3 is the minimum. And the second overlapping range, possibly overlapping range, is 
going to end and at six so this is my input and i want to make it size four because i know the power of two answers so i will go four items back so this goes four items back this goes four items uh, ahead so i also know this answer one so three versus one one is the winner notice what just happened i just looked at the pre-processed sparse table twice which is all one okay so <clears throat> now we will improve on stuff like i will enable updates on array so i will the array will be dynamic uh, so i can use binary index tree bit uh, also known as fanvic tree due to its inven inventor's name uh, but bit is a more sympathetic name it looks like binary search tree but it has nothing to do with that uh, bit binary index tree it will be handling some queries in log n time remember with a, a static array i was doing it in all one time so i am kind of losing stuff but update will be very efficient like log n and in psa it is not possible actually it is possible uh, but you need to rebuild the psa again because once you update a value all the accumulated sums will be updated in the worst case so it will take on and you can also write this on here uh, but still the uh, bit will be doing this in log n time so it is nice and also you can also support mean queries with two bits not one but two bits with psa i can't support uh, mean query uh, and there is also a segment tree that we will also discuss uh, it will be uh, easier to handle minimum queries with a segment tree okay so that's why I will show you the sum query part of the binary index tree but trees conceptually uh, we will maintain an array basically uh, okay uh, but conceptually we will think this as a tree array is one index for implementation reasons so here this is the cool thing uh, important thing P let pk function denote the largest power of two that divides k okay so what does it mean p6 what is the largest power of two that uh, power of two that divides six it is two right not four because four doesn't divide six six okay pk is that then t k contains value of sum uh, that ends at six and that the size of this range would be two that two comes from here okay, so it is kind of complicated let me repeat again tk is going to hold the sum of a range of length pk so let's invert uh, in an example 3 6 will contain the sum of a range of size p6 which is 2 so p6 will contain a sum of uh, a range of size 2 ending at 6 so you will go to uh, d4 6 so you should uh, remember it like this end point is very easy k okay then you will go to left uh, until your range is of size pk it will be even more clear with the visual example here basically this is your tree array okay again this is not a tree it is a conceptual thing this is your input array so with that example actually what did i do three six is what this three six contains the sum of this sub array what is that it is a range ending at six okay and the size of this this range will be p6 and p6 is computed as two it is the largest power of two that device six so it is visually corresponding to this rectangle with that logic let's improve our let's practice more uh, three four should be easy because p4 is four right what is p4 largest power of two that divides four 
is for itself so it will be about a range ending at this index and it will be of size 4 so in other words it will be uh, holding this sum 1 plus 3 plus 4 plus 8 which is 16 right so I have 16 here so now sum 1 to k be careful so in this is started one can be computed in log n because range 1k 1 to k can always be divided into log n ranges uh, whose sums are already stored in tree so again sum 1 to k uh, like uh, 1 to k can be computed in log n time why because uh, this range from 1 to k can always be divided into log n intervals why why is this true uh, so in this case n is 8 right so log n is Three. So I will have at, I will be seeing at most three items. So for this case, for instance, if I am interested in range from one to seven, this is the worst case in this case. Uh, I will still be using at most three. In this case, I will be using three guys. So I will use this guy plus this rectangle plus this rectangle. Why this is the case? Because uh, let's assume. So what I do here is, uh, I have a range from 1 to 2 to the A, uh, so 1 to K. So let's consider 1 to 2 to the A part, where 2 to the A is the largest value below K. So I get rid of a big deal of the problem in one shot. So in this case, half of the problem is gone. And then for the remaining half problem, I do the same recursively. I will I have this problem of size 3 again the largest power of 2 is 2 so I will have this size 2 subarray it gets out of my life and then the one entry which is 2 to 0 okay so there will be at most log n such rectangles that I will be touching if the input the index is already a power of 2 it is the best case actually there will be a reserved uh, there will be a reserved uh, bar for you. You will only get it. So if you are looking at index from 1 to 8, just look at this range. The number of range will be only 1. Or 1 to 2, just look at this range. Okay. But in the worst case, you will be looking at, at most log n ranges. Okay, so this is already given here. So for this case, the shaded rectangles are the ones that I'm interested in. The first one is this. Second one is this. And third one is this. Rectangles are below it, as you can see. And then, so why is this good? Because I know these values. So I know this in one time. These are just lookups, right? I have already pro computed them in my binary index tree. And there will be at most log n of them. That's why the sum, the query will take log n time. That is where the log n comes from. Uh, uh, so this is basically doing this action from 1 to k arbitrary k it doesn't have to be a power of 2 or anything but I may want a query that doesn't start at 1 so I may want a query that starts at 3 then actually it is the same idea I will do the PSA trick uh, that the trick that I learned in uh, prefix array so to get the sum of from a to b I will get all the sum from 1 to b I know how to do it in log n time and then I have some excessive amount extras and I get rid of the stuff from 1 to a minus 1 not a because a is in my life again this is log n to log n is equal to log n yeah so it does it like that how about update? After updating a value in the array, so I think here I am updating this value. So, one, three. Yeah, this is a different array. Okay. Uh, um, so, no. Anyway, so this is the bit. It doesn't really matter where it comes from. So, I 
update a value in the array uh, if I update the third value in the array then the number of uh, intervals nodes that will be updated will be this node obviously because it is directly responsible this node from 1 to 4 because it includes 3 and also this node 1 to 8 because it includes includes 3 so in other words you will draw a vertical line from i or in this case i is 3 uh, and uh, again you need to update all the uh, stuff that this line intersects and each array element belongs to log n ranges so here is the observation so this line cannot cross all the bars okay so it can't be on it will cross only log n guys and what is the intuition about that uh, first of all last bar is going to be definitely involved all right because you will update one entry it will definitely affect the sum from one to n because one of the entries is updated right then uh, the line the layer above it will be either left of it or right of it so there will be only one update so i will be updating only half either the left half or right half so this is the binary search logic right then from here you also do one half so you get rid of half of the problem in one shot so you will have log n ranges uh, that's why update takes log n time uh, okay so uh, to make the implementation uh, efficient and to do this log n stuff I need to compute this pk in constant time okay what is pk it is the largest power of 2 that device k so I can do it in log n log k, k time right I divide the number k uh, by 2 uh, until I find the largest power of 2 uh, uh, sorry I, I look at all powers of 2 uh, until uh, I don't further divide k, k successfully so it will be log k but there is a nice trick uh, bitwise you represent the number as a as an 8 bit uh, or uh, you represent you have the bitwise representation of this number so for 6 it will be 0 1 1 right so this is 2 this is 4 4 plus 2 is 6 what you do is use 0 all bits except the last one so because you will keep the largest power of two that is the idea so it will be two here for seven these ones go away only the last set one remains one because one is the largest power of two that divides seven so with that in our pocket so it is just one bit operation uh, how do i compute this sum from one to k uh, which is useful for my query uh, for A to B because in any case I will need queries from 1 to something okay then I will be update any query from anywhere to anywhere else so some 1 to K is very uh, crucial in my life and this is how I compute it uh, so for instance if we again let's go over an example some 1 to 6 the way I compute this is, if you remember, I will be using these two intervals, right? This plus this. So, k begins as 6, it is bigger than 1, okay? Then I use the value, uh, which is 7, which is these sum of these two entries, 6 plus 1, 7, okay? So sum is 7. Now, I get rid of this part, so I... Uh, go below 6 and I get rid of the largest power of 2 that device 6 which is what 2 so I get rid of 2 from 6 so I am now at this index 4 so uh, when the new iteration comes I add this value the sum from 1 to 4 uh, which is in this case 16 okay 16 is added uh, from my uh, binary index 3 and then k minus so k was 4 
what what I subtract from sir I will subtract p4 what is p4 p4 is 4 because 4 is the largest power of 2 that divides 4 so k becomes 0 and I break because I I am done I am out of the bars so yeah, and as we have discussed there will be log k uh, sorry log n such uh, steps yeah and addition is similar uh, the code is uh, uh, again simple. Uh, I want to update the sixth location, so I will be in this example. I will be hitting two. I will be doing two updates on uh, on what entries. Let's see. So six is less than eight. Okay. So I will basically update three six. So this entry seven. This entry will get updated because. Uh, once this guy is updated, this one has that guy, so this uh, little, little rectangle of, of size 2 gets updated, and then what I do is I add something, so I go in the reverse direction now. What is the P6? It is 2, right? 2 is the largest power of 2 that they are 6, so K becomes 8. In other words, I will go to this largest bar uh, which is at 3, 8 ok, so I also update it so what about the construction of this bit, so so far I have uh, assumed that all these uh, values are available to me, all these bars have nice values, so for this bar I have 6 plus 1, 7 so, but why, how do I know these values to begin with uh, we can use something that I have already created. So initialize all the elements to zero. Then we have already seen addition operation, this operation. Okay, so I can add values to all these entries one by one. Uh, I have n entries and I have seen that add takes uh, log n time. So this would take n log n to build the binary index tree. Okay. Uh, so all range can be filled but there is a little trick uh, prefix sum array that we have seen in the way beginning is very useful here uh, because it already uh, has this uh, information the sum information uh, you can build it in O n time and then you can do just lookups in O one time for each range sum so what I mean, so for instance, I want to get this range sum, okay, from 5 to 6, okay. So how do I do it? Uh, there will be a prefix sum array of the original input array, so I don't see the input array here, but anyway. So to get uh, the sum from 5 to 6, what I do is, uh, I will, so let's let this be the original array, okay. I change my mind and let this be the prefix sub array. So basically, to get this sum, remember the PSA trick, I have all this sum minus this excessity, this extra part. So in other words, I look at this value of PSA minus this value of PSA. So I can fill that part in all one time. Now let's do one more structure segment 3 it's also quite popular it is even more general than uh, binary index trees uh, they support some queries uh, uh, binary index trees support some queries also mean queries I haven't shown it but it is a little complicated because you need to use two different bits but anyway with segment 3 you can support some mean max also additional queries like greatest common divisor etc in log n time so it is uh, nice in that sense it takes more memory because uh, you will see uh, uh, there will be some duplication uh, and it's harder to implement unfortunately but again this is more general so trade-off st has mean and sum naturally in log n time 
bit has some in log n time, bit has min in log n time, but you need some complicated implementation. So segment tree. Uh, again, tree is just conceptual here. I will maintain an array. Uh, to make the implementation simple, array will begin at index 0, not 1. Uh, so uh, it means that the query ranges are zero based. This will be clear uh, as we go further. Don't worry about it now. And uh, again, to keep things simple, array size is assumed to be of power two. Uh, but this is not an assumption. You can always do it. If your array is not size uh, size is not power of two, you can append extra dummy elements to get this property. Okay. So this is the segment tree. Uh, basically, your array is this. Uh, so this array goes to the leaf of the segment tree, and then uh, I sum these values. This is the parent, a thirteen. Sum of six plus three is nine. Sum of the next two is nine. Sum of the next two is eight. And then sum of these two intermediates is seven, and seventeen. So basically, this node corresponds to the sum of the array from 4 to 7 it is responsible for four elements okay and eventually the root will have the sum from 1 to 0 to 7 all the eight elements uh, so at this level the range length is 4 as we have seen here now any range can be divided into log n ranges whose values are already stored in the trees, in the tree nodes. So take any range like from 2 to 7. And by the way, the uh, range queries are zero based. Okay, so it means that uh, 2 to 7 means this is zero, this is 2. Okay, so 2 to 7 <coughs> to get that I, I have these nodes basically I have this node responsible for this sub sum and this node 9 responsible for this sub sum you will just have 9 plus 17 uh, so and the number of nodes that make up my interval is at most log n so this is the cool part this is the trick uh, so why this is the case this is the case because at most two nodes will be used on each level you need to observe this so what do i mean by this so on this level for instance i may what if i use only this node and this node it is still valid so i don't use this 17 don't worry about it now it will be giving me the sum of this range from 2 to 5 which is valid but if the range is like uh, the original shaded one 2 to 7 then I will not use this node because then it would there will be more than two nodes one two three three nodes the claim is at most two nodes will exist and it is totally redundant it is it defeats the purpose the sum of these two nodes already exists but one level up so just look at one level up don't look at these nodes and in this case there will be one node in this level and one node in this level or, or you can also do this interval from 2 to 6 then you will get this again you will get this again uh, I will not get this and for 6 this is also a node be careful this is a leaf although it is not circle but this is a node so you will get one node from the bottom level uh, so this 2 comes from the leaf and 2 to 7 comes from this node 9 and 6 3 comes from this node 9 okay so at most two nodes on each level uh, <clears throat> so constant number of nodes and there will be log n levels this is uh, perfectly balanced tree by definition so that's why uh, some complex is log n there will be at uh, most log n additions log n terms after an update, uh, so for instance, this is the array. I want to update this node uh, from 7 to, I don't know, 10. 
so this node will definitely be affected because the leaf 10 so it increases by 3 so you will have a path unique path from root to this leaf and you will apply this delta 3 to all these nodes this becomes 30 and 12 this becomes 20 and this becomes 42 and this path has uh, log n nodes uh, as we know from binary tree class uh, basically you are uh, halving your problem at every step that's why you will need log n steps to go to a problem size of 1 which is in the leaf uh, so I have uh, a path of length log n so I need to traverse the path from the updated element to the root and updating nodes along the path so uh, the path from bottom to top always consists of log n nodes in a balance balance tree like this one uh, so update complexity is also log n nice implementation uh, so to keep this going uh, I will use an array again as before uh, but this will this array will have two n entries not n entries okay n is the size of the original array so the original arrays goes to the second half of this 2n stuff okay so this is the original array and then this guy then I just uh, put the others uh, in this zigzagging order 8 9 9 13 17 8 9 9 13 17 12 uh, sorry 22 39 okay so 3 1 is the root etc and as I told you the bottom level is reserved for the uh, original input then we will use the arithmetic that we have studied in the heaps class again uh, so to go to since this is a balanced tree a complete tree uh, the parent uh, k you just divide k by 2 and you go to the parent okay there is no pointer you just do arithmetic similarly the left children of k is 2k and right is 2k plus 1 then to get the sum remember uh, to get the sum from 2 to 7 basic I need to touch this node that covers the stuff from 4 to 7 and this node that covers the stuff from 2 to 3 so what I do is uh, I begin so A and B is my original range, but be careful, this array is shifted to the second half of the 2n size array. So that's why I add n's to correspond to the co uh, to land at the cor uh, correct uh, leaves. So A is this and B is this in this case. Uh, then remember over 2 is, uh, it makes me go to my parent this is the again binary heap logic uh, so I go to the parent and as I find it convenient I add it to my cur current sum that is the logic actually so here even though I go to the parent I don't add this 8 so this fails it doesn't add uh, and when I go to the parent of that parent 17 this holds true and I add it so it is the logic here again uh, log n steps will be necessary as I traverse from root to the top add, uh, add is uh, uh, implemented like this it increases the array value at position k by x okay as the name implies so at position k so I want to increase remember uh, at position k by uh, x so I add n because that array is now in the second half of the 2 n size array so I come to this point okay I will add x to it uh, yes it is added then I go to my parent k is equal to k over 2 so I go to my parent and from the parents perspective I look at my left child and I look at my right child uh, and I take the sum again it is not a big deal just two terms 
and I update it. So let's assume that x is 10, okay? Then 16 becomes, 6 becomes 16. Then I go to my parent. This becomes 16 plus 3. Left parent, left child 16, right is 3, not updated. 19, this becomes 19. Then from here, k is equal to k word. So go to the parent of this, which is this. Look at the left child 2k which is 13 13 plus look at the right child which is 19 it would be 32 so this becomes 32 basically you you touch log n nodes because this path has log n nodes it's a complete tree balance tree uh, and at every node you do two steps left and right client log n time so then st can be constructed in linear time uh, I already have this add function, so start with zero values uh, uh, in the leaf level and add the uh, array values, whatever it is. So in this case, I don't know, array was starting from here, so add five first to this index, then eight, then six, and everything above will be fixed automatically by this add function that we just discussed but this will take then n log n time right because add is log n and i will do n of it n log n you can do it in o n time as follows go from the last intermediate node this node okay because the the this half remember this is two n size uh, array this half is already filled, this is the original input and this 8 corresponds to the last intermediate node, okay, this guy so to complete it, look at the left and right child of it using 2k and 2k plus 1 arithmetic, make the sum, put the value then look at this, make the sum, to put the value, look at this, look at this so I will look at all n elements explicitly and when I go to one element, I do two lookups, so it is on uh, okay, so segment tree can also be used for mean queries. Basically, divide a range into two parts, complete the answers separately for both parts, and then combine answers. Okay, uh, so this is the idea I have just applied for some queries. I will now apply it for mean queries as follows. So, what is the minimum of this array? It is one, right? Basically, what I do is uh, every three node contains the uh, smallest value in the corresponding array range so for instance for this range 3 and 6 smallest is 3 for this range 5 8 5 is the minimum and for this whole range the minimum is 5 versus 3 3 wins similarly the winner of this 4 size range is 1 1 versus 3, 1 means so the minimum is basically in the top <clears throat> uh, yeah, I, I can compute the minimum like this. again it's a conceptual tree so uh, I will do uh, log n moves uh, to compute the minimum at any range I can have multi-dimensional segment tree so this is kind of advanced but I will just give you the idea if your array is multidimensional, like 2D here, let's begin with the root uh, leaves. Sorry, so this row is an array of size 4. So I will have a segment tree for a 4 size range. Uh, so, as you know, again, I'm doing addition here. Yes, so 7, 6 is that 7, 6, 13 is the parent of it, etc. For this row, I have another segment tree. For this row, I have this segment tree. And for the fourth row, I have this fourth segment tree. Now, how about the rectangular region? So for this region, I merge these two row segment trees. Okay, so these are uh, segment trees. Now I am talking about segment tree of segment trees. I will take two segment trees, and here is the uh, resulting segment tree basically for this sub array or sub rectangle uh, the 
column-wise additions will make up the uh, leaves like this 15 is for this 15 this 6 plus 7 13 is for this node uh, yeah so and then if you fill this uh, array which is responsible this segment 3 which is responsible for this region and I, I can still have sub uh, values within this rectangle so in this case I need to access this column sum plus this column sum, sum which are hidden here 13 plus 6 which is 19 or for this region I will look at the next two leaves uh, there is one more uh, uh, detail I may say it's called daisy propagation uh, so it is about making range updates faster so when there are many updates I don't want to update all the elements in the range one by one okay I will update uh, uh, I will do the updates by postponing some postponing some updates till till some point where it is inevitable so uh, this is your lazy propagation example uh, again we have this array uh, of size uh, 16 I guess here so now let's go over the example increasing uh, so seg here is a segment 3 after increasing all of the elements in this range okay so there's an all here all of the elements so many updates in the range from A to B so okay this will be my range A to B I want to update I want to increase all the values by 2 so this is the problem so it was 7 before this becomes 9 for instance but uh, instead of making these values 4 and 8 okay I don't do the update explicitly rather I go to the node responsible for them which is this 2 plus 6 8 and I keep this 2 update in my life by putting it on this field called the lazy part uh, similarly uh, uh, similarly uh, so let's go over the rule if x y range is partially inside a b we increase the s value of the node by some factor uh, so if x y is partially inside a b so in this uh, so let's first go with completely inside this if x y so let's talk about this node okay this node is responsible for this region x y range which is completely inside a b okay then since i have a control i have complete control over this node which is in my range completely uh, i don't update all these four items one by one rather i update only one value which is in my lazy part of this node so so similarly what else happens so this node is responsible for two entries which are completely inside the AB range similarly this node is responsible for these two entries that are completely inside my range but now be careful this node is partially XY range so this has this range right from 2 to 9 this is partially inside so now i will read this difficult case so what i do here is uh, i will uh, um, basically uh, nine so what happens here is the following uh, this sum becomes 11 now uh, and this part so there was a 17 here uh, there was a 17 here beforehand as we can see from here 
but uh, the thing is uh, I need to increase this value by 4 because 2 is the increment amount and I have 2 is the height of this so, size of the intersection of AB Uh, so so let's execute this uh, apply this update to make it clear so uh, for instance I want to compute uh, as sum from A to B in this case I don't know I think yeah okay A, B a different range so the laser update is applied to 28 so be careful so this two is supposed to apply to four items right so it has a power of four plus two eight so I update I uh, add that eight to here now I make the uh, application so this becomes 28 and I don't owe any lazy thing so the lazy part becomes zero again so this is kind of the idea uh, so this increasing all the elements by x can also be done with a difference array it is even an easier action it has nothing to do with segmentary by the way it's just a different data structure so this supports uh, many updates in uh, many updates efficiently so how do i do it if this is my array this is the difference array, so basically it indicates the difference between two consecutive values. So 3, 3, the difference is 0, right? And 3 to 1, difference is minus 2. I need to do minus 2 to go to here. 1 to 1, difference is 0. 1 to 1, 0. 1 to 5, difference is 4 in the positive direction. So with that DA in my life, what I can do is the following. Uh, when I want to increase the values in this range by 5 I will I claim that the following holds uh, I will go increase this value by 5 why because this will become 8 right logically I will not do that update but it will it's expected to be 8 so the difference will be 3 plus that uh, 3 to 8 it will be 5 okay so this this is why I update, I increase the preceding value, the initial beginning of the range. And there will be some further action in the end of the range. I don't care about intermediate values, they are not affected. But in the end, so again, this will increase like from 1 to 6. Uh, but the difference is supposed to decrease because this got increased, but the immediate neighbor is still the same so uh, that's why I need to decrease that value from the uh, n index ea5 so this is the result this becomes 5 and this becomes 4 minus 5 minus 1 everything else is fixed so uh, generally uh, I will do plus x to the beginning and minus x from the end uh, only two updates to update n elements so there's going to be all one time you can augment segment trees further so again this is uh, advanced but uh, I can support even weird queries like how many times does X appear in a given range then here is my segment query uh, here is my segment tree one two three these are my possible entries so uh, let's begin from the root uh, leaves so 2 two appears 1 times in this interval of size 1. So in other words, all the uh, data structure part of this node will be 1. And here, in this part, 2, 3, 2 appears 1 times, 3 appears 1 times. And 1 appears 0 times, so I don't even write it. Similarly, uh, for this interval, 1 appears 3 times. So this node is responsible for that interval, right? I can fill this up. So query is answered by combine, combining results from most that belong to the range. So to find the answer within this range, I look at the shaded no nodes with the segment tree logic. Remember, 
these nodes represent that uh, interval then I will look at I will answer uh, I will process each node depending on my query so in this case I need to look at all the elements one by one uh, and I need to uh, find the values here so fn will be n in this case hence uh, it will take n log n time so this uh, finishes our uh, range query business actually uh, now I will show you one last range query data structure that runs in square root of n time which is a nice time it is way better than n in terms of growth rate so it grows slower than n which is nice but it doesn't grow as slow as log n that's why they call it poor man's logarithm uh, so it's not as good as logarithm but it's quite close to it but it is easy to compute so with prefix sub array I have shown you that I can answer some queries in constant time but updates will be on it and binary index 3 and segment 3 will do everything in log n time now with the next uh, idea the sum will be slightly worse slightly slower like poor man's logarithm square root of n but the updates will be wonderful they will be constant time so the logic is this your array is your input we divide it into blocks of size square root of n then you uh, put the sums of these uh, blocks as a separate uh, attribute of these blocks okay so it can be implemented easily so this is for sum but the same idea goes for mean query as well right so instead of keeping the sum here 7 8 15 20 you will just keep the minimum which is 1 but let's go with the sum so first things first update is very simple if you want to update this element in the array there is a block corresponding to it that I can find in with one arithmetic operation and I will update this block only so in this case it decreases decreased by 2 so is this block value now the sum is the uh, more difficult part at least to understand you need to divide the range into three parts for this case uh, so for this range sum I will divide the range and I will use the block sums from here and the single element sums from these nodes so the answer will be uh, 3 plus 6 plus 2 for single and 35 for blocks but now the, in general number of single elements is at most square root of n why because if it is square root of n then it's a contradiction because then I would have uh, clustered them into a different block right that is the logic that, that is clear hopefully so let me repeat again if the single elements if I have more than square root of n single elements then they would have made a totally different block so they won't be single anymore that's why there will be at most this many single elements and similarly number of blocks is uh, square root of n because this is how I begin with remember uh, I divide range into blocks of size this so it is how I proceed so uh, to answer the sum query I will look at some block sums which is at most square root of n and some single element contributions which is again at most square root of n I have two square root of n which is the all, all square root of n uh, query time uh, so yeah it is clear in practice we divide into k blocks uh, sorry so the optimal parameter uh, depends on your problem so if you you make some observation and if your algorithm often goes through the blocks uh, but rarely inspects single elements 
So what does it mean? I always go through blocks. So these are the blocks. Okay, so but single elements are like dots. I don't do it. So I can cluster these blocks into bigger blocks, right? Because uh, of the situation. So it may be a good idea to increase block size. How do I do it? I will divide the array into less blocks. Maybe not square root of n blocks, but maybe less than that. So you can update this structure as you go. So this is this was also related to range queries as you have seen. Uh, and the rest of the class, which is about 28 slides, is has nothing to do with data structures, but there will be more square root complexity examples from number theory that I personally like. And I will also show you the computation of square root with an algorithm. So it is uh, again not about data structure, but you can stick with me if you want. So uh, prime or not question is a given number, prime number or not. Uh, where prime numbers are the ones greater than one that has no natural numbers. Uh, prime number is a natural number <coughs> that has a divisor of one and itself only. Okay, it is a definition. So then, with that definition, the primary prime test can go like this: you look at all the numbers from two to n minus one, and you try to divide n with that current number. If it divides then it, the n cannot be prime. This is just a definition. I can improve this O n complexity look from 2 to n minus 1. I will be looking from 2 to the square root of n only. And consequently the complexity will go down to O big O square root of n. But why? A mathematical argument here. If a number has a factor larger than square root of n, then it surely must have a factor less than square root of n, which is already checked. Uh, okay, so I, um, it must exist because otherwise the multiplication would be more than square, more than n. So, what I mean is this this contradiction. If it has this, uh, n is my number. Square root of n times square root of n is n no problem here but if one factor is a little bit more than that and then i cannot keep this at square root of n i need to decrease it otherwise this multiplication will exceed n which is a contradiction it is not equal to n uh, so let's see this in action 36 square root of 36 is 6 so if it has a factor more than 6 which is 9 then it must have another factor less than 6 which is 4 like 12 is the bigger one then i must have a guy that compensates for it which is 3 less than square root of 36 so with that logic a larger than n factor of n must be multiplied by a smaller factor just like we have seen here 4 here or 3 here that has already been checked so that's why if if it it's, if it has that factor, then there must be a compensation with a smaller factor, so it is enough to look until square root of n. That is the logic. Uh, so it does it actually, but I can do one more trick. I can go six by six instead of one by one, because I claim that all primes are of this form: six k plus one or six k minus one, because of the following. I can write all the numbers in the word with this tactic 6k plus i where i goes from 0 to 1 uh, so like I don't know uh, 7 is 6 plus 1 right etc or 11 is 6 plus 5 I can write it like this <clears throat> uh, so in this uh, form uh, 6k plus 0, 2 and 4, they are all even, so they can't be prime by definition. 6k plus 3 is a multiple is the multiple of 3 because it is 3 times 2k plus 1, so it is not a prime for sure. Then all that remains is 6k plus 1 and 6k plus 5. And I can write them as 6k plus 1 or 6k minus 1. So when it is 7, for instance, it will be 
6 plus 1 and when it's 11 for instance it will be the next uh, 6k is 12 12 minus 1 okay so that's why I can safely write it with write it with plus minus 1 uh, so with this in mind primary tests can be done with increments of 6 so I will always go uh, 6 further I, I think it's that 6 here and with I also do square root tactic here uh, I square is less than n means I less than square root of n so this is a faster prime test for you prime factor is an essential, is an essential uh, thing in math uh, every number can be broken down into prime factors in other words prime factors are the building blocks of all numbers so for instance 12 is 2 2 2 times 3 where 2 and 3 are primes prime factorization of n requires a search for prime factors in this range because we have just seen that uh, prime must be less than this uh, so it looks that it looks like this big operation takes this time but uh, the, you may wonder the cryptography depends on this prime factorization and it is definitely not uh, all square root of n to factorize a number into prime factors the thing you are missing is the following this algorithm here will give you the prime factors but it doesn't give their multiplicity which is an important information so the power the exponent it is important to have that that's why this is kind of the toy version of this problem don't get confused uh, yeah so uh, I should also mention that uh, if you want to factorize a prime number so this is the slowest algorithm it is correct this also does the multiplicity for you because as you divide it by f uh, you append it to the uh, to, you append that number to your prime factor uh, pool uh, so this this definitely doesn't have o n o square root of n complexity uh, what else so this is a little bit faster version basically you increase f by 2 because a prime number prime numbers are separated by at least 2 right so you need to go through odd numbers at at, at least so you, even a smart move like this increases your time timing twice so it's good to know this and in this version there is also a square root of n tactic going on be careful uh, more issues can be uh, for a base uh, m digit number so if you really want to understand the cost of prime factorization that the cryptography depends on you need to look at the bit representation of this number uh, and then you will see that number of divisions here which controls the uh, uh, runtime is exponential in this m the number representation so it's that, that that's why they call it prime factorization is exponential uh, and we use a function called pi pi n it counts the prime numbers less than n so for instance prime numbers less than 10 would be 4 yes it is 2 3 5 7 4 2 uh, etc so uh, pr be careful here this is exponential in m which is the problem size so prime factorization is a prime uh, exponential size problem that's why the cryptography algorithms are so robust they cannot be broken easily the problem size is not n because n is just a value it is not the problem size you you are dealing with only one number and you need to factorize it so i want to make this clear only uh, more useful tools on primes 
the one is this Euler's totem function which counts number of positive integers less than n that are relatively prime to n so for instance 21 is relatively prime to 22 okay because no there is no common factor between them other than one that is the definition uh, so if your n is a prime number then it will be having very few factors it, it, it actually only one and n itself so it will not be it it will not be relatively prime it will be relatively prime to anyone else because n is prime then you will have this part this uh, n equal to n minus one graph here so this is this just makes sense i want to mention that so this Euler's Toten function, I was impressed by it because of this application that it leads to a regular n-gon, this is a polygon with n sides where every side is at the same size. It can be constructed with this ruler and compass tactic if Toten n is a power of two. So I, I don't know the proof of this honestly, but it is very interesting to connect this prime issue to a geometric issue uh, and the way we compute this function is basically there is a formula for this which uses the prime factors it doesn't use the multiplicities the exponents that's why you can use your square root of n algorithm to know the p1 p2 the primes that are factors of n and then you plug them in to this formula so for 20 it happens to be 8 so what is 8? number of integers less than 20 that are relatively prime to 20 so they are what? 1 one is relatively prime to everything by definition 1, 3, uh, 5, not 5, 1, 3, 7 uh, 9 uh, and then 11, 13, 17, and 19. Yes, there are eight. Uh, so this computes that as well. Um, and I want to finish primes with this school pattern. Um, it claims that every square of a prime is always one more than a multiple of 24. So p square is 24 k1. Let's first digest this. For instance, uh, 7 is a prime number, 7 squared is 49, it is basically 48 plus 1, or 17 squared is 289, it is basically 288, which is 24 times 12 plus 1. But why does this hold? So you can do a little bit arithmetic, p squared minus 1 is 24k, so I expand this like this and so let's look at the three numbers p minus one p itself and p plus one so remember p was prime so this can't be even then this is even as well as this is even because these are three consecutive numbers so if this is a power of two then p plus one will be a power of four okay or the other way around if this is a power of four then this should be a power of 2 but in any case because of this argument their multiplication p minus 1 times p plus 1 must be a multiple of 4 times 2 8 so this is in our pocket another observation I have three consecutive numbers one is prime so it is not a power of 3 it is not a multiple of 3 sorry uh, so one of them must be a multiple of 3 let's say p minus 1 then this multiplication is a multiple of 3 so now let's reconsider everything this multiplication is a multiple of 8 also a multiple of 3 so what is the least uh, common multiple 8 plus 3 24 so p minus 1 times p plus 1 is a multiple of 24 uh, and finally let's uh, leave with square root computation so this is totally irrelevant but still cool because so far we have dealt with 
square root complexity. Now I will do square root computation as a word game. Uh, so what if I want to compute square root of 10 without a calculator? We can do binary search actually. Uh, put numbers from 1 to 10 and look at the middle number and take the square of it. It, it is bigger than 10 then go to left so kill all the half the problem this is the binary search logic uh, so, uh, this this will be n over 2 right since this is n and n over 2 square will almost always be larger than n so that's why uh, in the first direction you will most likely to go to left but again it doesn't affect our complexity so let's use all the numbers from 1 to n so 5 square is more than 10 so go to left I went to left in this sub array look at the middle 2 square is 4 less than 10 so go to right so kill all the this problem uh, in this interval look at the middle of this 3 9 is less than 10 so go to right so I, I go here and in this little interval, middle is the interval itself, 4 squared is 16, more than 10, so go to left, but there is no nothing at left, so stop. Uh, 14, 4 is unrecover, unrecoverable, because 16, I overshoot 10, so what was the most recent one before 4? It was 3, so I use 3. This is how I compute the integer part of the square root in log n time thanks to binary search but I also have the fractional part and the logic is this uh, 3.1 so I will try all the digits up from 1 to 9 as long as they are satisfactory so 3.1 square is less than 10 increase 3.2 square is more than 10 apparently so 10 point something so I, I overshoot I don't really look at 3.4 or something so I overshoot so I roll back once so I keep one so I am with 3.1 certainly so this is one these are all ones then I do the look uh, look up again from 1 to 9 3.11 square less than 10 continue 3.12 continue and apparently 3.17 square is more than 10 so back up one step 3.16 take the 6 from the second for the second digit so basically you do this for uh, all p digits and basically you are looking at nine possibilities at first and i do it p times so 9p uh, of course the constant goes away within the big O notation so i end up with log n plus p and p is probably going to be insignificant so you can also approximate this with a log n but uh, this finishes our log n plus p uh, derivation this also finishes the class today uh, again as a very quick recap we have dealt with data structures that enables that enable fast answers to range queries and additionally i have done some some algorithms that run in square roots uh, complexity that run with square root complexity i have also shown you a square root computation oh. algorithm so that's it then thanks